Thank you for the invitation. This is Yuan Ping from University of California, Santa Cruz. I'm going to uh, introduce um, my recent work um, after arrived at UCSC. So this is a picture of the campus. Um, so UC Santa Cruz is in the Silicon Valley, uh, close to the Bay Area. The campus is embedded in the forest, close to the ocean. Um, it's a uh, hard to find a building uh, when you walk through the campus. It's a uh, very beautiful, like a national park. Welcome to visit it and apply it to our program. So my group is a theory and a computational group. We do a lot of method development as introduced. Uh, back to many years ago, I started uh, uh, developing mind-body perturbation theory for excited states in solids, in particular solving the better speeder equation without ex explicit empty states with my colleagues. Um, which is a method scalable for larger system. And more recently, I moved into uh, exciton recombination through radiative and non-radiative process. And more importantly, uh, we look at uh, uh, quantum dynamics, uh, specifically open quantum dynamics to look at uh, decoherence process. I will introduce more later on the theory uh, background. And correspondingly, we do different uh, type of applications. For example, um, spin qubits in quantum information science, uh, spin relaxation for spin tronics. Um, that is more in the quantum information science area. Um, in the energy research, we look at polaronic transport in metal oxides, how to improve its transport property by doping. And the photochemistry, look at excited states at the heterogeneous system. Theory development and uh, uh, applications often go hand in hand, and my group bridge condensed matter physics and the physical chemistry to solve complex material problems. As I mentioned, a big part of my research is material for quantum information science. And in this area, it's uh, rather broad, and the candidates of qubit have several, and in my group, we mostly are focusing on the spin qubit, for example, spin defects in diamond. More recently, we work on the HBN um, well, with the uh, spin qubits. At the end, you want to couple spin defects um, to form a quantum network for quantum computing or communication. The goal of uh, realizing this, you need uh, to have uh, long quantum coherence, efficient readout, and quantum transaction. From the material point of view, uh, we would like to design spin qubit, which ideal for the application on quantum information science. These are the list of criteria. How we are going to, um, what are the criteria to look for good qubits? Uh, they need to have deep levels and bright optical transitions that you can address with a photon high quantum efficiency and the PL contrast, and high spin state at large zero field splitting, which guarantee you have a spin state to man manipulate. At the end, you want to long spin lifetime. From um, a theory point of view, um, we use the first principle methods to reliable predict the related properties. And then we can guide the experiment um, to characterize and synthesize materials. At the end, when we have a, a feedback loop between theory and experiment, we, uh, we can reach, find the good qubit for applications. So the more detail can find in the review paper. And recently, we work on the defects as a qubit in 2D material. There's a, a big push in this area from experimental side uh, from the theory side, there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of technical challenge because of the weak and anisotropic dielectric screening in the two D system. For example, the screening is mostly out of the material. This will lead to large many body effects. For example, electron hole interaction, exciton phonon interaction, a defect exciton interaction. Correspondingly, we need to develop a theory uh, reliable to predict the properties for defects in 2D system. For example, um, because of the weak screening, we have a problem of uh, 
convergence of the supercell size of the defect uh, host material and we developed uh, methodology to uh, correct this kind of uh, charge defect problem, remove the spurious interaction between the supercell where we can reach convergence immediately without supercell extrapolation. More detail you can find in this paper. And uh, we also further computed excited states at the many body perturbation theory level, which include the accurate correlation and the electron hole interaction, which is important for 2D system where you have very strong electron hole interaction. At the end, you can compute radiative and non-radiative lifetime, which determine the quantum yield of single photon emitter and um, determine the readout efficiency if you use photon for the qubit. And we can compute a different process the rates for different process, at the end we can uh, together determine the uh, optical readout, which separate the um, dynamics between the different uh, spin sub levels. And the bottom is example of effect of strain on the lifetime of a spin qubit. One thing I want to point out is the exciton lifetime we developed in the past years by solving the better speeder equation, we start from deriving the exciton lifetime, where the Q is the exciton momentum, and this is the rate uh, for the exciton recombination, and we derive it for different dimensional system. We define the unique power law dependence uh, due to the momentum energy conservation. From this table, we show example of black phosphorus uh, black phosphorus exciton lifetime as a function of dimensionality from 0D to 1D and 2D. For example, for the 0D is at a scale of nanosecond and 1D at a scale of picosecond and 2D is a scale of femtosecond. This is at zero temperature. Uh, so we mentioned uh, for the scaling um, of power law. And there's another interesting effect for this particular system. The exciton is only extended along the armchair direction, and it's uh, forbidden along the zigzag direction. Do you see a more anisotropic effect when you increase the size in the zigzag direction or armchair direction? It has a different uh, magnitude of change. More importantly, to compare experiment, we need to have a finite temperature lifetime where you need a thermal average of different exciton energy. And for 2D material, if, uh, past work shows the exciton energy dispersion can be non-parabolic, which means the effective mass approximation may break down. There, you need to, to take into account accurate uh, exciton dispersion uh, from many body perturbation theory and where you can obtain the exciton lifetime in much better agreement with the experiment compared with the traditional effective mass approximation. And now I'm going to switch to the second part, uh, which is also related to quantum information science, but uh, more importantly for spintronics, where we look at not the localized spin like qubit, but the collective spin through spin orbit coupling, we couple with uh, electronic structure. So the big challenge in quantum information science is um, in decoherence, where your quantum state will lose information by coupling with the environment, which has been the number one issue uh, in this uh, field. There's other uh, need related to the uh, relaxation and decoherence is in the low power electronics, where you have spin transistors and, and you conduct spin instead of charge current. And in on fundamental physics, uh, we need to understand the spin hole effect. More recently, there's a growing area of valley electronics where you use circular polarized light to access to the different valley, which correspond to a different spin. And in all these applications, you need spin information transport as long as possible, which uh, directly relate to the long spin diffusion lens. And in my work, we can compute both the uh, spin lifetime and diffusion lens. So what are the fundamental mechanism determine the length of the uh, 
spin lifetime. At low temperature, a large B field, the nuclear spin flip flop is the most important mechanism. At the finite temperature, other effects are more important, for example, phonons, impurities, electron electron interaction through spin orbit coupling. And for the second mechanism, spin orbit related process, we rely on a framework of open quantum dynamics, which can um, study the decoherence of couple electron and the carrier for solid state. They come from the um, theory of open quantum dynamics, which has a several level in this ladder from non-Markov approximation to Markov approximation, and uh, the lowest is uh, the Boltzmann equation, where you start with density matrix and at the end you approximate to the um, occupation number in the semi-classical level. In this application, we need to have at least the density matrix and we also need the P, which is scattering matrix, which contain the phase information of the spin state. And more importantly, we need to be able to simulate long, uh, long time over nanosecond to microsecond uh, corresponding to the spin relaxation process. And we have to be able to deal with non-equilibrium process because experimentally, they often use um, pump probe measurement for this type of um, application. Theoretically, this is what we do. We solve the Lewin uh, von Neumann equation in the interaction picture, which contains the coherent dynamics and the scattering dynamics. In the coherent dynamics, we have the pump and applied field. And in the scattering dynamics, we have different type of interactions between electrons and electron phonon and the electron impurity. And each scattering term needs the scattering matrix P, and we compute from first principle, which is the most important part and also difficult part. And once we have density matrix, we can compute observable for spin or carrier. And the implementation or the calculation requires several steps. We build our tool on top of existing software of GDFTX or Quantum Expresso, where we can get the DFT states and the phonons and electron phonon matrix element with a self-consistent spin orbit. And we compute that at a coarse mesh. Then we do the vanier interpolation, which can interpolate to high K and Q mesh. At the end, um, the part of the explicit building uh, uh, to compute the dynamics where we need to compute the scattering matrix first and then compute the time evolution of density matrix. At the end, we can get observable. And this slide is a basic uh, formalism we used in, in detail. Um, I'm not going through that. All I want to say is we have uh, electron phonon, electron impurity, and electron electron uh, three parts. And for electron electron, this screen coolant potential contains the RPA dielectric function. And we have benchmark against you know, GW approximation at finite temperature. And move forward, I'm showing some examples with the theory we developed. Um, first, I start with the classical example of silicon um, for silicon electrons in silicon. And zero spin lifetime is in the red dot, and we compare with experiment in a wide range of temperature. And the carrier lifetime is green, which is much shorter compared with spin. And we also benchmark the BCC ion uh, against experiment. And for this field, more importantly, is to study system without invariant symmetry, which has the spin precession uh, introduced with the um, rush bar effect. And here we have an example of uh, uh, MOS2. MOS2 is electrons, uh, uh, spin lifetime as a function of temperature. Another classical example is gallium nitride. Gallium nitride has this characteristic of up one half relation between the z and x direction introduced by the DP mechanism. And on the right panel are the recent example of a 2D system uh, graphing on HBN, which shows even just put a, a substrate of HBN with a very low spin orbit, you can lower the 
spin lifetime by several order of magnitude compared with freestanding graphene. And we look at how we can um, manipulate the material to, to have spin valley locking, which can give you very long spin lifetime in the Germany system. Let me see what time is it. Okay, I still have. Um, so now I'm going to give you more detail of the physics behind it. Start from uh, molybdenum disulfide. Uh, MOS2 has broken inversion symmetry, which does not have an inversion center. And it has a very strong spin orbit, so you have a larger split in the band edges. Particularly in the valence band, you have a very large uh, spin orbit split between up and down state. So this causes a very strong internal field, um, which directly causes the spin valley locking, where if you excite with circular polarized light, you only excite one particular spin direction. And once you excite the spin, you will have uh, spin polarization can be relaxed through the intervalley process or intravalley process. And the good question here is what's the intrinsic spin and valley lifetime critical for valley tronics? And in the, in the MOS2 example, because of the larger spin orbit split in the valence band, the intravalley process is difficult. So you can see the whole lifetime is much larger than the electron in comparison between the left and the right because the electron split is much smaller. On the other hand, uh, for the electron's spin lifetime, it's more dominated by the intravalley process. If you compare with the red and the black, the black is the lifetime contribute only from the intravalley uh, in the same k-valley process. And we have compared with experiment result as well. And for the whole uh, spin relaxation, it's more dominated by the intervalley process, which is the, the blue curve. And in our formalism, we can also analyze what's the important contribution of phonon. For example, at a relatively low temperature, the acoustic phonon, which has a lower branch, more important with this large percentage, when you raise up the temperature, you start to include the optical phonon more and more, where they have occupation at a relatively high temperature. And we can also look at the mechanism of in-plane and out-of-plane spin lifetime. It's a function of the um, extrinsic scattering rate, which is uh, anti-proportional to the carrier lifetime, or inverse, inverse of carrier lifetime. So this panel shows the, for example, the red curve increase uh, spin lifetime with scattering rate shows the inverse proportion between the spin and the carrier lifetime, which is the classical DP mechanism. And in this community, often people discuss what kind of um, um, physical process or mechanism for spin relaxation. It is the Eloy Yafet which have spin and carrier being proportional or DP mechanism because of spin precession introduced by internal magnetic field you know, of uh, SOC split. It has this anti-proportional between the uh, spin and the carrier lifetime. So we can compute this formula from first principle but with this empirical equation and compare with our exact first principle density matrix dynamics, which is the blue curve. You can identify which mechanism you have. For example, the silicin, which is the top, has a uh, rather DP mechanism, which is this uh, brown curve compared with this blue. And the bottom, Germany, which is also monolayer Germany, uh, Germanian, uh, has a more uh, Eloy Yafet type of mechanism, which is the purple da dash line compared with the blue. Fundamentally, it has a lot to do with the internal field. For silicon, it has this internal field being tilted, but largely in plane. But for Germany, you have this strongly auto plane internal field, which will pin the spin, mostly being auto plane. 
just like uh, uh, MOS2 spin value locking. At the end, I show you an example um, of a classical um, uh, spintronic material, n-type gallium ashenite. With our formalism, you can compute the spin, uh, spectroscopy signature, for example, um, pump probe curl rotation. The top is a, a smaller um, time scale and the large, large bottom is a larger time scale. You can find the curl rotation, uh, which is the uh, theta, uh, is uh, rather aligned with the spin expectation value of SE. And you can extract the spin lifetime from this curve. And the red will show the internal um, dynamics. The top is electron dynamics, so we can show the electron finish the relaxation after the two picosecond. The bottom is a spin relaxation. It is still relaxed after two picosecond, extend to after 10 picosecond for spin. So we have a methodology. We can simulate coupled spin and carrier lifetime. You know, uh, dynamics for solids from first principle, and we include the different quantum scattering process uh, exactly. And we also, for this example, we obtain a good agreement with experiment. With our framework, we can analyze what kind of contribution is most important at different temperature for spin and the carrier lifetime. For spin, we show the electron phonon being the most dominant at the high temperature and low temperature is electron, electron. This is the example of n-type gallium ashenite. And for the carrier, on the other hand, at a high temperature, it's still electron phonon compared with, when we compare, we compare with this black curve, which contained all the contribution. But in the low temperature, it's rather dominated by the electron impurity, where this blue is closest to the black. Another important <coughs> message from here when you have all contribution um, of different parts, the spin lifetime is the highest, but the carrier lifetime is the lowest. So this also represents an anti-proportional between the spin and the carrier uh, when you consider different scattering process as expected for DP mechanism. OK, I'm going to conclude the work. Um, First, I introduce our recent method development of density matrix uh, dynamics for open system, including different scattering of electron phonon, electron electron, and electron impurity for coupled spin and carrier dynamics for general solids. And more details you can find in this work. And we uh, implement and develop the efficient accurate approach to compute the charge defect charge transition levels for 2D system you can find in this paper and uh, computed a radiative um, lifetime by solving the better equation and a non-radiative process as well as inter-system crossing. I did not mention that this is an important process um, for qubit initialization. We can compute these rates also uh, from first principle includes spin, uh, spin orbit and electron phonon coupling. And we'll discuss the effect of dimensionality and isotropicity and the strain. More detail you can find the following paper. Um, work in progress, we are looking at spin relaxation and decoherence time for spin defects and design uh, new spin optotronic materials. Um, this is, uh, I would, would like to uh, thank the funding agency and my collaborators, both from the theory side and experimental side. And this is my email address and the website. Uh, welcome uh, to comments and welcome to apply to my group. Uh, thank you for your attention.